Eva Jankowska. I'm the professor of cardiology and geriatrics working in Wrocław Medical University in Poland. Uh, I'm also the member of the executive committee in the HFA board in the European Society of Cardiology. I had the great honor and pleasure to participate in the joint session organized together with European Society of Cardiology. And now I would like briefly uh, recapitulate uh, my major, most important messages arising from my, from my presentation. This year, uh, a group of seven associations working on heart failure across the whole globe uh, decided to make the consensus regarding the universal definition of heart failure. The output of this work has been published as the position paper, universal definition and classification of heart failure, which has been approved globally and has been published in two major key journals dealing with heart failure, European Journal of Heart Failure and Journal of Cardiac Failure. The major aim of this initiative was to provide the universal definition of heart failure that would be clinically relevant, simple, but conceptually comprehensive with the ability to subclassify and to encompass stages within with universal applicability globally, and also with prognostic and therapeutic validity and acceptable, acceptable sensitivity and specificity. Uh, this initiative indeed was the response to several needs. First of all, we need to accurately diagnose heart failure in our patients in order to treat them properly. We also need to improve our communication and understanding with patients for shared decision-making and transition of care between different healthcare professionals. Finally, uh, the precise diagnosis of heart failure gets extremely needed for the endpoints in the setting of research clinical trials and registries. Um, until now, first of all, there have been several traditional approaches towards the heart failure. Many people used to consider heart failure as the clinical syndrome due to dysfunctional heart, which is not able to fulfill tissue metabolic requirements. Uh, I'm sure you're aware about the old Framingham study criteria to diagnose congestive heart failure. And indeed, uh, in recent years, several different definitions have been proposed by contemporary international clinical practice guidelines. However, also, if we look at the classifications of heart failure, we can see different systems. We can speak about acute or chronic heart failure, the novel versus acutely decompensated, we can distinguish different clinical profiles, wet, dry, cold, warm. We can speak about different ANWJ classes, LV dysfunction, uh, left or right-sided heart failure. Finally, there, are, there is a bit of mess regarding the classification of cardiomyopathies, patients with advanced heart failure, and also administrate the different administrative codes for heart failure hospitalization. So the concept was to provide the agreed and established system, universal definition of heart failure that could be applied globally, along with few clinically relevant classification. Importantly, the background of our discussions regarding this definition was related with the first criterion as the cardiac dysfunction diagnosed differently. On the other hand, with the congestion, because there is no bad. Congestion is the center of heart failure and we need to consider this properly. So as the consequence of all the discussions after, as a, also as a kind of compromise, but very wise compromise, 
uh, we provided the following definition of heart failure. Heart failure is a clinical syndrome with current or prior symptoms and a signs caused by a structural and a functional cardiac abnormality and corroborated by at least one of the following, high natriuretic peptide levels and objective evidence of cardiogenic pulmonary or systemic, systemic congestion. An important element in this document was also the the establishment of subsequent stages of heart failure. I mean, stage A, it means patients at risk for heart failure. Stage B, it means patients with pre-heart failure. It means there are signs of heart dysfunction, but yet without symptoms. And finally, we have stage C as a heart failure and stage D uh, reflecting to patients with advanced heart failure. This classification, the stages, have significant implication for the treatment decisions. Uh, in recent guidelines and also this document, we emphasize that pre-heart failure, stage B, is very important in the context of treatment, as here we should intensify our heart failure prevention measures. There are features which identify patients at the very high risk of going into overt heart failure, like high enteral BNP, presence of diabetes, obesity, low GFR or albuminuria. And in the, on the other hand, we also have several therapies that can be already implemented and they can prevent heart failure, like SGLT2 inhibitors in patients with diabetes, like phenerenone in patients with diabetes and impaired renal, fail, renal function, and also diuretics in some patients. We have also proposed the classification of heart failure based on ejection fraction, uh, emphasizing uh, four different groups. I would like to focus on the heart failure with mildly reduced ejection fraction, ejection fraction between 41 and 49. Please do not use any more heart failure with mid-range ejection fraction for this category. And also we, we emphasize and introduce the new category, heart failure with improved ejection fraction which identifies patients who have already had impaired ejection fraction below 40%. And then, then this, 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 uh, this situation uh, has been improved. Finally, finally, uh, there have been some, some additional categories for clinical trajectories in heart failure, which are new onset, the novel heart failure, worsening heart failure, improving heart failure, persistent heart failure, we should replace the word stable heart failure, and also heart failure in remission, which should replace the word recovered heart failure. So as a consequence, I think at the moment, based on the discussions, critical uh, approach toward the evidence that we have, at the moment we have universal definition of heart failure, which can be used globally, clinically simple, clinically oriented, extremely pragmatic, with several classification. We do hope this, that this initiative will help us to lead clinical and also research now in the future. Thank you very much for your attention.